There is a game in which players bet with their clothes, calling captivating bluffs, as everyone shows, what is concealed under sly hands when non-composed. Wild cards are the undressing queen and joker, observed in tantalizing hands of strip poker, where one will be left disconcerted and exposed. Friends find treasure when playing poker for frolic, while leaving the ones defeated melancholic. Yet all have the face of a discharging wet dream. Some spurting faces twitch like whiskers of a cat, while others conceal fear by limiting their chat, feeling like they are falling from a balance beam. Some can possess a pair of towering aces, not camouflaging informing funny faces, as their betraying foreheads become billboard tell. Some lose hands by every possible dimension, causing them immeasurable hypertension from every inhaling and wheezing plasma cell. No dates are allowed if sexes are not even, for fair play is something all my friends believe in, while only certain ones have an invitation. Sexual balance spices up the atmosphere, while getting its ravaging amusement in gear, with all hoping for naked intoxication. The men crave to behold womenly derriere, while hoping to possess a great hand to declare, conceiving queens leaning over the bronze table. The men wish at least one woman will lose her blouse, as they deeply conceptualize her full house, with their conquering cards they hope to enable. Everyone playing becomes contradictory between wicked competition and victory. Still all participants have their monstrous needs. The women want to see the men's firing squad shooting up quickly like a bolting lightning rod, growing determination at various speeds. Convulsing fear thrums between my staggering legs as the diabolical voice inside me begs for champion cards for special intimacies. I sense women removing clothes dramatically as I contemplate nakedness ecstatically, knowing I lack prestigious poker expertise. My friends want the undressing card party started as I strive not to appear chilled or faint-hearted. Then all the other shareholders burst out laughing. Hope has taken over my physical structure, while functioning like a duplicitous bluffer, as the blaring shuffle of the cards are crackling. We take care of the competition playing rules, creating evenness with a couple of jewels, while sitting around the glass-topped coffee table. All members are seated side by side on the couch as competitors strive with effort not to slouch, attempting poker faces when they are able. Six of us are enthusiastically playing, hoping natural bodies would be displaying with five mysterious unexposed cards to start. A maximum of three cards could be changed per hand, after that, approved regular poker rules stand, as card colors inspire action like fine art. My antagonists are roused and raring to go, as dripping excitement begins to overflow, while no contestant wants to be nervous or scared. I feel invincible, thinking I could not lose, sensing I would not even have to remove shoes and at no time would I be intimately bared. During the first round, I am pleasantly surprised when an erotic dream full house enters my eyes, making any change of cards unnecessary. I essentially notice the worried appearance of astonished faces without perseverance, with a depthless presentation that seemed 
wary. I pompously sit there, superior and smug, lit vigorously like an overfed spark plug, while the other players scramble to discard cards. They all hope to get a better combination for dedicated winner determination. Still none could appropriate their poker face guards. I cherish the first round when all revealed their hands, for no one had the cards that a good hand demands, as I had the highest hand of all six players. One foiled woman had the lowest with ace high, while all players administer the evil eye, as the distressed losers remove the first layers. The hoots and cats calls stretched to the bothered actor with my repugnant mind filled with baneful laughter, unsure to hand clothes to me or set them aside. We agreed losers must hand clothes to the victor as I wrapped around clothes like a bow constrictor while the other defeated participants sighed. I stood up in conquest ceremoniously while my rhythm was thumping harmoniously. As we all proceeded into the second round, I am immediately dealt grotesque garbage, making me feel trapped in uninvited bondage as my disfigured terror began to compound. I am able to draw a lusting pair of jacks. Then I erroneously started to relax after changing maximum three cards fearfully. I am satisfied with my honorable hand, as my conscientious win is properly planned, but laid down, all players have higher hands than me. The winning hand is a sincere trio of fours, as I hear my discharging, perspiring mouth roar, followed brutally by a trumping pair of kings. I feel peep at having lost the second round as I circulate my eyes to the frosty ground for the uncanny shame losing hurriedly brings. I attack disastrous cards in the third round when earnestly hoping not to be losing bound while starting the worst loathsome losing streak ever. After that I lose five horrid hands in a row as more defenseless naked skin I had to show, hating this vulnerable stripping endeavor. Piece by piece I remove my antiquated clothes, fearing another piece routinely to dispose, as others carried mischievous expression. I take stock of my appalling situation, moving towards immense scandalous degradation with me as their undressing servant possession. I am two steps away from total nudity, thinking I could not suffer further foolishly, while other participants are more fully veiled. I needed a round of supernatural luck, aspiring to get my bad fortune unstuck, yet that contemplated achievement target failed. My objectionable losing streak seemed unfair, stripping down to my polka-dotted underwear while the sarcastic card players sit mesmerized. They sit ogling in my almost naked state as the lampooning shuffling cards began to grate when I was the only player not energized. I blissfully received a potential straight flush which bestows me with a metaphysical rush in joyous concentrated nine to five diamonds, I am grievously devoid of the drifting eight, raising my rapsy, accelerating heart rate with my hope in the miracle-seeking highlands. I have another holy five as my fifth card. Then my contemptible badly dressed nerves were scarred when I discarded the Marvel 5 stupidly. I ended with a 2, leaving me with 8 high, while candidly I could not possibly deny that my foolish mistake would cost me brutally. 
I could not help blaming ego for casualty, balancing me in extravagant agony as the whirling room took on a deadly stillness. The other players wait in anticipation, offering no favorable consolation as the circulating dread feels like an illness. I timidly stand to peel my last clean clothes, where underwear and stinging skin are juxtaposed, as all the participants concentrate on me. I tensely disrobe slowly, yet sensuously, as my sn snickering friends exploit venomously. Then all other spiteful players cheer joyfully. The audience did feast on every body part, with each gender-specific inch to pick apart, from my shapely calves to my rugged abdomen, my belly button defenseless in the center, harmonized with spiral hips of prolonged splendor to the unprotected penis of the showman. All the feverish nudity that I could see was disastrously directed back at me, for I regrettably lost the last poker hand. Any help from divine God was disregarded, for nothing helped the cards even when discarded, when I could not draw a queen or a face card man. I morosely stand naked to accept my loss, wistfully feeling like I have been double-crossed, as the clothes from others brushed against my torso. I timorously feel more naked and exposed, with all my safeguarding outmoded clothes disposed, leaving me feeling like I was in a porno. The game, depending on bad luck, did not resume, as the antagonist laughed in the living room, so I ask if anybody wanted fresh drinks. The snickering harassment is getting intense as my unsheltered unveiled birthday suit expense as the other participants mock with hijinks. I serve the vigorous drinks in my present state without caring how my anatomy might rate, providing like an obedient naked slave. I walked undisguised to the bar across the room hearing clamorous laughter like a sonic boom, with scoffing like an electromagnetic wave. Every disrobed eye is concentrated on me, as I apprehensively chuckle inwardly, as the humorists are watching my encased ass. I flamboyantly sashay away from scorned them, with only myself furiously to condemn for starting out the first round with repulsive sass. I am the denuded failure of the evening, as the others are reprehensibly screaming, voting in their own interest to have one loser. Without hesitation, I down a nude stiff drink, as my bare unblushing laughter begins to shrink. Still, I have to preserve my raw sense of humor. I feel dreadfully screwed and bamboozled doubly with my nudity plus no stripped woman bubbly for my eyes will not penetrate the ladies nude. The saturated night is a catastrophe having to exhibit my nude anatomy. Still my body carries through as the night concludes.